You're listening to the 10 Bagger Podcast, presented by The Daily Gold. Join us as we uncover tomorrow's 10 baggers today. And now here's your host, Jordan Royburn. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the 10 Bagger Podcast. It's 10 Bagger Tuesday. And for episode number 15, I am speaking with James Qantas. He is the editor of Resource Opportunities. You can find that at resourceopportunities.com. James, thanks so much for coming on. And my first question for you is, when you think of the term 10 bagger, what pops into your head? Oh, the ones that got away. <laughs> actually, like patience, uh, patience, actually, you know, uh, pops into my head because, uh, you know, that's one of the hardest parts of this game is having the, you know, fortitude to see something through to a, to a 10 bagger. I mean, we're into a different kind of market now, um, particularly in gold, but, uh, you know, like a lot of peaks and valleys in a typical, uh, in a typical 10 bagger. So as far as patience, my follow-up would be, so you have to be patient for a lot of these 10 baggers to play out, but how can you differentiate between um, the things that you're being patient with that have a really good chance to play out versus your the things that you're being patient with that they just don't pan out or they have a low chance of panning out? I know it's really hard. You know, We'd all be a lot richer if we knew how to do that, but do you have any thought as to how you can differentiate between like, this is, it's good to have patience with a certain company and, and this other thing is a waste of patience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's tricky, isn't it? I mean, um, you know, obviously management uh, teams um, are so important. Uh, everybody says that, right. But um, you know, if it's a, if it's a good, uh, you know, very solid management team, then I'm more comfortable um, and, and backers for a company you know, then I'm more likely to uh, not lose patience. And, you know, obviously it's hard when other things are moving, right? But often, you know, often if you give up and, you know, move money into something that is moving harder, typically like the other one will, Murphy's Law, but uh, the other one will start to move and, <laughs> and there you go. So can you share with us a a 10 bagger that you did pick and you invested in and made money on versus one that, uh, got away. Like what are the top ones that examples that come to mind for you? I guess the top one that, that comes to mind would be uh, next gen energy, which is a uranium developer in the Athabasca basin. Um, you know, so when I took over the newsletter from, uh, from Lawrence Rolston, who, who had it prior to, to me, I think he started, started writing about next gen at 30 cents and it was at 40 low forties or 45 cents when I started writing about it. Um, you know, incredible high grade, uh, discovery and, uh, the arrow deposit just kept growing and uh, growing. Um, so that was, you know, a rocket ship, but then of course we're into a, and that was in a bad, uh, uranium uh, market. Um, and so that's picking up now, but, I forget what the high was. It was, I think it was like a high, uh, mid to high fours on that one. Of course, uh, it bottomed out, uh, well below a dollar not long ago. And now is, uh, is picking up again. So again, I, I, you know, my approach was to, you know, I sold some of it, but I held on to a core position just because of the quality of the, of the deposit. So along the way, like was, was there a point along the way that you realized that this could be a 10 bagger? Like this had real potential to be a multi bagger. I mean, was it after the, the discovery was made or just take us back through the history and kind of how that evolved. And at what point it became clear, like this thing could, you know, this has serious upside potential left. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was just the, uh, those early, uh, drill results at, um, at Arrow were uh, like almost ridiculous grades, right? Especially if you, you know, I'm not, not a fan of this, but if you put them into terms of gold, 
um, <clears throat> just multiples of uh, forget about like the average uranium uh, deposit being mined globally, but you know within the Athabasca Basin, which is very high grade uranium. I mean, next gen's results were were multiples of that, um, and they just you know they they, they uh, just sort of kept hitting hitting uh, these incredible uh, holes and proving up the deposit. So tell me about uh, a ten bagger that got away. Hmm. I mean, uh, <clears throat> one that one uh, that comes to mind, and and you know, I don't know if it's a ten bagger, but I, I was quite early on West Haven Ventures, right? Uh, uh, Gren Thomas's um, exploration company. Uh, high grade gold discovery, you know, so I was covering that before their big discovery, uh, just because I liked the team, good share structure, uh, great infrastructure. And I liked how they, uh, liked how they ran the company. But at a certain point I did, uh, kind of ran out of patience, uh, on that one and, um, and pulled the plug on it. Um, you know, the programs they were doing were quite small and so on. And then they pull out this, uh, amazing discovery hole, <laughs> You know, so on that one, I was, you know, was so quite familiar uh, with the project and hadn't sort of stopped covering it for out of any fatal flaw. You know, so I sent out a flash alert and uh, have been covering it uh, ever since. But uh, it sort of goes to uh, yeah, it kind of it kind of goes to show you how tricky this uh, this game is, right? You can have so many of the boxes ticked, um, or you can have other ones that that don't have boxes ticked, but the uh, they find some, uh, you know, the stock moves. Um, and what you're saying about patience, it's really true because it, 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 people who are new to the sector, they might just assume that a lot of these discoveries, they, they're they like on the first couple drill holes. And some of these things, I mean, yeah, they can never hit anything for like five years. And you naturally are just going to get tired of it. You know, time, mm-hmm. value, cost of money, whatever that's called. And, yeah. you know, then you move on to something else and suddenly that company that then they hit the discovery, which you were looking for and you thought could happen when you invested it in, in it in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of exactly what happened to me with, uh, with, uh, with West Haven. Now, let me ask you about this. Cause this is something I, I've talked about in other uh, episodes, but the pre-discovery and p- versus post-discovery. And I, I think you focus you know, mostly on exploration. So you're probably a good person to ask on this. What are your views on pre-discovery plays versus post-discovery plays? I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to play in pre-discovery plays, man, you really got to take like a scatter gun, call it a scatter gun approach or invest like in a lot of these things, right? Because they, they really are lottery tickets. Um. And uh, so, you know, if you're going to do that, you know, like uh, share structure is so important, um, especially through this bear, uh, you know, less so now, but through this bear market, like, um, you know, I've covered a lot of or sort of followed a lot of companies that started out with great team, you know, pretty tight share structure and raising money at these uh, depressed valuations like the share structure it takes no time at all, uh, especially if you're raising with warrants, which most of them have to. Uh, for the share structure just to be uh, obliterated. Um, so pre, pre-discovery, I'd say, like, you got to spread that around, right? Um, and hopefully some of them work out. Post-discovery, um, you know, obviously some of that risk has been uh, removed, and, you know, you're, you're going to pay a higher, uh, higher price for it, but you can still get some pretty uh, incredible returns, um, especially when there's... Uh, you know, like uh, liquidity events or washouts like we saw in uh, in March. Um, and mo- when, mo- you know, the money just was sucked out of the sector and everything sort of fell across the board, regardless of the quality of the of the projects. So just having uh, having dry powder as well is uh, is so important. But that's another one that I that um, that I've been caught, uh, you know, caught off guard, not having enough uh, dry powder. Yeah, so let's talk about uh, criteria, and I want to 
separate because I, I think there's probably a little bit different criteria for pre-discovery versus post-discovery. Okay, so for pre-discovery, you said you have to take a scattergun type approach. Um, how how can is there any way you can narrow that down um, as far as criteria? Um, what I mean by that is just uh, not putting too many eggs in one, like not buying huge positions in in uh, in like a pre discovery play, right? Right. Let, let me step back for. I'm sorry because I wasn't clear. When sure. when you're figuring out which of those, because it's, it's like you're you know you're shooting bullets at all these things. When you're figuring out you know which ones to shoot at, which of the whole bundle that you're going to invest in. Right. I mean, let's say you have a list of like 20 and you want to narrow it down to like seven or eight companies. What criteria would you use to narrow down that list? Hmm. Well, you know, I'm a contrarian at heart, so. Um... Uh, you know, ones that haven't, ones that have, ones that tick sort of those uh, boxes, um, you know, project management team share structure, um, kind of whether, whether I like the people running the company, you know, uh, kind of, it kind of uh, boils down to that on some level. Um, so ones like, you know, ones that tick those boxes and that haven't uh, moved yet, like even in this gold bull market where things are starting to move and some um, particularly up market, but even like some, uh, you know, qual- high quality exploration plays are moving. So I'm more likely to, uh, you know, identify ones that haven't moved or say like in, a, in base metals or copper um, companies that have like maybe they even have a resource, maybe even a large uh, high grade resource, but they're being priced, uh, you know, the same as a as a pre-discovery gold play is right now. Um, so price, you know, like, uh, I guess in answer to your question, uh, price uh, matters, right? Price of entry. It's one of the few things we can control when we're investing in this sector. Yes, price and value. So as far as post-discovery, I mean, obviously we want to look for things that still have the growth potential uh, of a discovery, but what other things would you look at to, when you're looking at post discovery to narrow down the list of companies that you're researching? Well, you need like a strong technical team, but also uh, finance guys, right? Um, post discovery, a lot of it comes down to uh, what the valuation is like in this, you know, in this market, you know, I think there are, you know, you're, podcast is called 10 beggars podcast like i do think there are uh developers and good developers um you know like high quality where i like the management team and i think they have a a really good project you know that that uh that could be 10 beggars in this in this kind of market that we're heading into um so in some ways uh you know there's risk there's a certain risk with uh, with developers as well but I guess if you can get a developer uh, that, that you think has a realistic shot at a 10 bagger, um, why would you invest in a, a you know, like a pre a pre or post uh, discovery uh, expiration play if the price is right, uh, like on the developer uh, side? To follow up on that with developers, I mean, do you make the assumption that the developer has to go into, they have to build the mine, go into production. And, you know, because it's so profitable to do that, that that's how it's going to become a 10 bagger or could they possibly, the stock could just go crazy before they build the mine and somebody buys them out for some, you know, billion dollars or whatever. Like how do you arrive at a 10 bagger for developer? Do you have a, do you focus on one of the, one of the two or both? Uh, no, but like, uh, you know, I like to, you know, I think it's important to focus on, um, on developers that have the, uh, bandwidth and the team, uh, to build the mine. If that's, uh, if that's going to be the outcome, um, and, uh, and have they, you know, uh, is, have they built mines before? Like I covered a couple, uh, gold developers, um, and in both cases, the CEO, uh, the CEOs, you know, they're both in uh, in Canada. In both cases, the CEOs have have actually built uh, mines uh, prior and have a team in place. So you can't, uh, you know, you can't just um, 
assume that you got this great project, you're going to drill the heck out of it and somebody's going to come along and, and take you out. Um, you know, you, you really do need to, to realistically move it down the path to, even if that's your desired outcome, you gotta, you gotta move it down the path towards uh, development. Right. Like and have a realistic, uh, you know, and not just, to, not just to say it, but to, you know, have the team in place and, and the financing, uh, bandwidth and you know sort of the ingredients that that uh, a person looking at it you know with fresh eyes would say oh you know i could i could see the path to to uh to them building a mine right now you you touched on other commodities um you know uranium looks to be perking up uh, i haven't really been following copper base metals you know in my opinion it still might be too early to look at those but um, I like what you said because it was something I've been thinking about that, you know, given in in March, you know, how cheap certain high quality gold companies got, you know, we haven't, it, it, that's probably relatively speaking, you know, still the case in copper and some other uh, sub industries for commodities. So what are, are you following other commodities and do you see a lot more opportunity there as far as value and potential over the next couple of years? I mean, I have, it's hard to say how, um, you know, the, the uh, I mean, I think economically, you know, we're, we're obviously in a lot of, uh, a lot of trouble and it's going to look more like a, a depression than a recession um, in a lot of ways. So it's hard to say how the stimulus and, and I don't know if governments are going to like take the opportunity to, to, you know, put these huge infrastructure uh, projects and renewals, which should, you know, light a fire under the, under the base metals, but I'm kind of a, going on the assumption that a base metals recovery could be a ways away. So I am focusing more on, on the gold uh, names, but you know, like in March I did, um, I did pick away at a couple of companies that I like. Uh, one was like a new position in a, in a, um, sort of an exploration development uh, company, base metals, um, added to that. And then I also have a base metals royalty, um, uh, company. It was a new, new position for me. You know, and obviously, you know, the, the, the royalty company hasn't, uh, you know, it's picked up a little bit, but I was er again, I was early on that. Um, so it went down uh, more and it's picked up a little bit, but that's a long-term, you know, like that's a long-term um, play, solid company. I'm pretty uh, comfortable with uh, sitting on that, even if, it, even, if it, even if it doesn't give me the gains that, uh, that a lot of the gold plays on the gold side will, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that the, when, when there is some kind of economic recovery, I think all commodities will do really well. But the question really is, you know, yeah, for the, sure. time, the timing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the same within gold, right? I mean, um, you know, in, in March, um, you know, I put a couple of newsletters out and, and um, you know, during that sort of the period of uh, uh sort of these washouts um, where money was just like came out of the sector kind of indiscriminately. Um, what I, what I bought and what I focused on were uh, companies that ordinarily I, w I wouldn't uh, particularly in the newsletter, you know, like royalty companies, uh, larger developers. I bought like a silver development uh, company that had a pretty high market cap uh, already as far, you know, from my, from my perspective. But uh, you know, I just did it cause the price was, uh, the price was right. Like it came off so uh, much that you just knew it wasn't going to stay down there for long. And uh, for, you know, for some, in that case, for some of silver exposure as well. Um, so yeah, like, I mean, we're seeing it with the producers and the, um, some of the royalty companies have moved hard. And so it'll trickle down to the uh, exploration companies, but it could still, uh, could still take a while. So to or, follow or it could happen really quickly. <laughs> yeah. So to follow up on that, for um, for for gold exploration companies in general, you haven't seen any like a, a material benefit yet to this uh, the, the rebound that we've had. I mean, I know the advanced the advanced ones have probably. I mean, they've seen a huge rebound, but I guess the the smaller plays, you know, those early stage things where we're looking for ten baggers, have things really changed? for, for those types of companies in the last couple months? I mean, the short answer, the short answer really, 
and there are exceptions, uh, is no. Um, you know, you see a lot of the money flow um, into, you know, companies like uh, Great Bear or, um, uh, I mean, that's one that comes to mind. But there's other, Wallbridge and uh, Irving. Um, you see a lot of the money flows into these ones that are, that uh, have have really rocketed. But I think for the for the typical um, gold explore exploration company, even a even a you know like a fairly solid uh, gold exploration company, uh, the valuations are still pretty depressed. Uh, some of them you know managed to uh, raise money during you know some pretty tight uh, financing windows. Um, but for for a lot of those, especially given that we're at um, you know, we're at 1700 uh, U.S. And, uh, you know, for companies that have uh, projects in Canada, m- a much higher uh, gold price, you know, across the sector, I think, you know, the prices are, are very, um, are very undervalued uh, still. And uh, I, I do think we're heading into the kind of market where, um, you know, the challenge will be holding on to, um, instead of figuring out how, you know, at what point do I cut my losses, which is what we've been through for, for several years with a brief interlude in uh, 2016. Um, you know, the challenge will be like uh, having the fortitude to uh, hang on because these things are going to go higher than, uh, than people are going to believe, frankly, at a certain point. Yes. Now, with that said, do, can you share a stock pick that has the potential to go higher than we believe, a, a potential 10-bagger? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, so one that I've been focusing on and buying is um, Talisker Resources. Uh, you know, they, they have backing. Uh, it's uh, guys from Osisco who uh, drilled out uh, Bar- the Barkerville uh, gold. And it's also the exploration team from uh, Anglo-American in South America. They found a couple of multi-million ounce uh, deposits down there. So very strong technically. So they, they were on my radar because they staked a huge uh, uh tract of land in the Spences Bridge Gold Belt where West Haven operates. And those two companies have done uh, sort of a, a, an agreement as well. So they run my radar, but I hadn't uh, sort of pulled the trigger on them. That's still pretty early stage uh, exploration, what they're doing there. But then they picked up um, uh, a gold, uh, basically a sto- historic mine, technically three mines, um, that produced you know 4.2 million ounces of gold at uh, grades of 17 grams per ton back starting in the thirties and running all the way to, um, to the seventies, I believe. So it's called Braylorn. It's a historic uh, project that was in another junior that was having trouble uh, advancing the project. So it was, it was kind of a ready. I'd actually toured it under the prior company. And my son and I go up there and camp uh, every year. It's about four hours outside of Vancouver. So I was quite familiar with, uh, with the asset. And when I heard that Talisker was uh, picking it up, you know, for a pretty uh, good price, that's when I pulled the trigger and, and bought Talisker. Uh, I like the team. I like that asset. It's a very con- like the the mineralization is quite consistent uh, there, which is unusual, which is unusual for a high grade uh, vein deposit. Um, I like the fact that they raise money without warrants. They've done a few of those, and uh, it's basically a serious um, team. So it ran it ran pretty hard but interestingly when they picked up uh, Braylorn uh, the stock didn't do anything for I think two or three days the stock didn't move at all on, the, on that news um, and it, sort of at a certain point it picked up traction I think it hit 60 cents and then came uh, came down hard with everything else but it hasn't really rebounded uh, yet I think it's still trading under uh, under 40 cents so I think that one has has uh, a long ways to go on the upside I like what, about them the fact that it's exploration in the Spences Bridge Gold Belt, but then you know the Braylorn is a brownfields uh, deposit, so it's more a case of, um, in some ways, identifying uh, the gold that they're fairly certain is there, as opposed to straight exploration. So that one's TSK. They trade on this, the the Canadian Stock Securities Exchange. Alrighty. Well, thank you for that, James. And before I let you go, anything else, um, anything else that you want to mention that we didn't cover already? Um, nothing comes to mind, Jordan. That was a good conversation. Well, thank you. I'm glad we covered it all. And, uh, 
So resourceopportunities.com, any other contact info you want to give out? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm on. Uh, I'm active on CEO.ca under my own name. So you can uh, contact me there as well. There's also on, on my profile on CEO.ca, there's a, um, a discount uh, for the subscription. All righty. Well, James, yeah. thanks so much uh, for coming on. I really appreciate it. It was fun. Yeah, thanks for having and, me, Jordan. Uh, hopefully we can uh, have you back again in the months ahead and talk more about 10 baggers and exploration. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you for listening to the 10 Bagger Podcast, presented by The Daily Gold. For premium coverage of precious metals and the best junior mining companies, visit thedailygold.com forward slash premium.